Uh, just to start with, what's the plan with Drew Locke today? He's going to be limited today. He's going to try and take some reps out there. We'll see how he progresses in practice and go from there. But we definitely plan on him getting some reps today. Would you anticipate him doing any team work? Yeah. Okay. And then uh, who will definitely not practice? Um, Joe Jones is um, really only the one definitely not practicing. Okay. And then uh, lastly for me at this point, uh, just can you kind of update where you are with Ed, how Ed's doing and, and how he's progressing right now? Yeah, he's getting better every day. I talk to him every day, at least once, most days, twice, and we text a lot. Uh, but he's getting better and better every day, and he's improving. And he is, you know, looking in on some of the meetings virtually from his uh, residence. And uh, he's doing much, much better. Every day he gets better. That's what I mean. He is at home now? Uh, yes. All that. Okay. And then – you say he is participating in some of the meetings? He is, more so as, uh, you know, observing it, not partaking a lot in them, and then communicating with the, uh, the other two secondary coaches afterwards and in between. And then I was just kind of curious, the, the issues with the 10 men on the field and the 12 men during the game, is that something he would have been helping you with during the game, or is that is that one of those procedural things he would have been involved in? No, I don't, I don't think he would have okay. had an effect there. All right, thanks. Next one, Ari Stapleton. Hey, Vic, um, you know, Tua is not putting up the kind of Star Wars numbers that we've grown accustomed to seeing from rookie quarterbacks coming out of these pass-heavy offenses in college. I think he's averaging 172 yards. Um, what is it that impresses you about him, though? Um, obviously, he doesn't have the, any, any interceptions yet, but What's impressive to you as a as a defensive coach? I think he has good command of what they're doing offensively. One of the reasons uh, his numbers aren't so, so high is um, they've had a lot of short fields. And, um, you know, they got way ahead of the Rams quickly. Um, you know, they, it's, they've had some unusual games in that regard in that where, you know, they weren't throwing it a whole lot. Um, he's got a really quick release. He's accurate. Obviously, he's got the athletic ability. He can be a scrambler and elusive in the pocket. But I think the one thing is that he's running their offense very, very efficiently. Next one, Ryan O'Halloran. Hey, Vic, a couple of times last week, Miami on third down had eight guys at the line of scrimmage standing up. And a couple of times they sent all eight. What kind of challenge is that for your rookie center uh, to decipher who's rushing and who's dropping? It's a challenge for the uh, whole protection operation, not just the uh, center, but obviously he's involved in it being in the middle of it, but it is a challenge for, uh, you know, the whole passing game in, with protection being the main part of it and the quarterback and the receivers recognizing things also. Thanks one, Nick Kozmeyer. You've, you've talked about how, how Jerry Judy's been practicing really well toward the, you know, the last uh, month or so. W what have you seen on the field that's really kind of allowing him um, to, to have some of the success we've seen over the last three weeks, where I think he's ranked sixth among all wide receivers in the, in the league in passing, uh, receiving yards? Yeah, he's running good routes. You know, he's, um, we all know he has good hands, and they've really come to bear here of late. Uh, he's got a really nice job catching the ball. Um, and that's, that's what he, that's his strengths, route running and good hands. And he's been doing that. And he's been doing it with more confidence and he's kind of freed himself up there to do it. Thanks, one, Bernard Cristal. Coach, if Noah can't go, and obviously with, with no Albert O either, how does that affect your passing game in terms of your, you know, primary tight end weapons, I guess, not to discount the other guys, but how much does it change it? Well, it changes. I mean, obviously, if you don't have both, you know, we won't have Albert for the rest of the season. Um, you know, I feel confident that Noah is going to be okay. Uh, we'll see how he does today and tomorrow. But, yeah, if you, when you lose, um, you know, two good receiving tight ends, it does have an effect on your passing game. You know, we'd have to adjust with personnel. You know, maybe you'd play more four wide receiver sets when you get in passing situations or things of that nature, but 
yeah, it would be an adjustment. Next one, George Doyle. Yeah, Vic, uh, Devontae Bosby returned to practice for you guys uh, yesterday. What did you like out of him coming back? And um, can you kind of describe what this last, last month has kind of been like with him and, and sort of the roller coaster he's been through? Yeah, I mean, it's, he's been through an emotional roller coaster. Obviously, uh, we released him here. We wanted to uh, put him on practice squad for a week. Um, he had the opportunity to go to Arizona. He, he took it. Um, I think he was there for 10 days, you know, played a little bit in one game. You know, they released him. And uh, and then we claimed him after they released him. And, you know, but when he first went there, I did communicate with him, you know. And, um, you know, I've known Boz now for several years because he was with us in Chicago. And uh, we've kept a good relationship. And I think he was – I haven't asked him this, but I think he's happy to be back here. Next one, Eric Lawler. Hey, Coach, another one on Noah. Just curious how his involvement in the offense and his production kind of compares to your expectations for him coming into the year. I think he's, you know, pretty much met them. I mean, obviously he and we, all of us would like uh, him to have more catches, more yards, more touchdowns, but that's just normal. But I think Noah's made great strides from year one to year two. Um, and I expect him to continue that. He's He's got the right mindset. He's a good worker. He's prideful. And he's a competitor. And um, I see the improvements daily from him. Next one, Zach Stevens. A couple more after Zach. Hey, Coach, when do you want to make a decision on Drew? And is it something that you're comfortable taking all the way up until game time? I think we'll make a decision before game time. But, um, you know, we'll make the decision once we – have a good information, you know, based upon how Drew looks, based upon how he's practicing and feeling, and based upon what the uh, trainers and doctors tell us too. So it's a process. I mean, I mean, we'll make it before game time, but um, exactly when, whether it be after today's practice, after Friday's, Saturday, you know, I don't know. But it, it, when it's right to be made, we'll make it. Thanks, so Michael Spencer. Hey, Vic, what's impressed you the most about Deshaun Williams and his play for you guys this year on the defensive line? And then kind of a follow-up to that, what does it say about the defensive line room when they have guys like Deshaun and Shelby and Mike who've been told over and over again that they weren't good enough to play in this league and have now found a home here with you guys? Yeah, Deshaun is um, – he's come in and played the run really well for us. He's a tough guy, very prideful, has good strength, and um, he's really – taking advantage of this opportunity that he's had and uh, probably long overdue for him. Just happens to some guys that way throughout the league. You know, they don't have the size that you're looking for or the pass rush that you're looking for, but there's a place in the league for guys like him. And, and he's come in here and taken advantage, full advantage of his opportunity. You know, I think guys that have been cut more than a few times and have journeyed around a little bit, you know, they learn to appreciate it, and when they do get the chance, they're they're all in. And uh, these guys have done a great job of that. Final one, Kyle Newman. Pick another one on Noah. So you mentioned his growth in, in the second year here. What are you looking for him to do in the second half? Expectations or or room for growth in specific areas of his game? Who, who is that? I didn't hear that. With Noah Fant. Noah. Fant. Yeah, I just think um, you know we'd like to get him the ball more, obviously. Um, obviously, just him to continue growing as a tight end in all areas, both run blocking, pass blocking, and we occasionally ask him to do that. His route running, catching, run after the catch. He's a good runner after the catch, but I don't think he has weaknesses. He just needs to keep improving and uh, to be the all-around tight end that we think he is. And he's doing that now, but obviously he can improve.